Uh, we won't even blink an eye if you overshare, because according to Glamour, these days it's standard to empty the contents of your brain and heart, I think, all yeah. over the place. So are we fans of the overshare? Yeah. Or would you prefer no. to keep things more private? Yeah. Okay, do you like the overshare of the celebs or friends that you really are interested in? In other yeah. words, right? <laughs> So this is the thing. I think if you like a celebrity or you're really yeah. interested in what your friends or family are up to, then you're hitting follow. Mm -hmm. And then th why you're following them, presumably, is because you're interested in what they're up to. And so uh, that's the part of this that I always don't understand when people are like, oh, you share too much. It's like, you're following me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not following you, because I don't care. Right. No, but you know, so that's always the part. But in it, just sort of generally speaking, I actually think it's a positive thing. And I'm gonna tell you why. I think that for all the evil and grossness that is on social media, the overshare in my eyes, at least the way that I see it playing out online, perhaps the way that I use it, is also vulnerability. Yeah. And I think that when we overshare, somebody thinks like, okay, well, here's what I'm having for breakfast every single day of the week. You might not like it, but I like it because I'm on a health journey and I'm interested there. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to deeper stuff, I've shared a lot on the show and online about my anxiety and panic attacks. And some people might say, that's really personal. Like, you shouldn't be sharing that. And yet, it makes me feel less alone when I share, when people are sharing with me, oh my gosh, that's exactly what I'm going through. Mm -hmm. And I think that there is actually a humanity that is brought back to social media when we are vulnerable in the lack of being able to see each other face to face. And so I think overall, at least in my feeds, mm -hmm it actually brings more people together than it does repulse people. And if you don't like it, just hit unfollow mm -hmm. and all is fixed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But unfollowing is also dramatic. Yeah. <laughs> mute? How about mute? I, yeah, is, that's also why I don't, like I think that if I need to know what someone's up to, I want to ask them in person. Because <laughs> what, what do you mean? <laughs> That's so novel. Because I do, I hear what you're saying. I think that in general, a lot of the things that are shared are can help people, especially the examples that you cited. But I don't think it's as easy as, easy as unfollowing someone. Because we've talked on this show about what unfollowing someone can mean politically or in a friendship circle. Then, if you find that you're getting bombarded with a person who's oversharing and you just can't handle it for whatever reason and you unfollow them, then they take it personally. Why did this person unfollow me? And then what are you supposed to say? You know, your story of oversharing are like really cringy or I can't handle it. Like it's very weird. A celebrity doesn't really know if you're gonna unfollow them. But when regular people are behaving like celebrities do or vice versa, then it becomes a little bit like, they post it on social media and then the next time you see them, you run into them at an event and you're asking them, how have you been? Like, you know, oh, I did this. Oh, you did? Mm -hmm. How was that? Yeah, I posted it. Didn't you see? And like, then what you're supposed to say? Oh, I didn't. Yeah. Right. I, then it's that's an all another kind of awkwardness. I don't know. Everything is just awkward to me. These days. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was thinking th there are some overshares that I like that I actually think they can be funny, and but also the heartwarming in a sense. Like if you share like that you got your period and you showed your bed sheets. I think that's great. A lot of people might think that's TMI and let you know, which I think is funny to let someone know it's TMI, just like, yeah. again, scroll past. But I think some oversharing, especially when it comes to opinions and politics, does have the potential to maybe stunt personal growth. Hear me out, like, if you think about a 20-year-old, let's say, 20 years ago, and maybe they have parents, uh, one of them's a misogynist or racist or homophobic, and that 20-year-old starts absorbing some of that ideology, and that 20-year-old starts repeating it. But I think with time and with personal growth and evolution, that 20-year-old has a chance then of evolving and shedding that, and maybe just a handful of people would be the wiser that they once had this. But now, that 20-year-old is potentially sharing those ideas with a thousand people, a million people, and he finds a community that uh, is like-minded and he becomes cemented, he or she becomes cemented in their thoughts, or that they do have that personal growth, but it's they, what they had felt early on was made so public, they can't dig themselves out mm. of it. Like it's life altering. So mm -hmm. I think that's, that's sort of bigger picture, but I think it's something to consider when 
we, we become, I think we've become less forgiving of mm -hmm. that. It, it's not, the, the potential for growth is harder now. If you will. Mm. Yeah, I hear you. And those are like big picture ideas of oversharing. Like when I think, I think when most people hear oversharing, they do think of the stories uh, that are kind of squicky about like the human body, like stories like that, people talking about sex yeah. openly. And I, I will see, say, I'm childish, I love those. Uh, me too. <laughs> yeah. And one of the things is, is like I grew up in, like many people did, where there was a ton of silence and shame and secrecy around the body, around sexuality. And so like I've made an entire career, I do an entire podcast around yeah. unmentionables, things that people are told they shouldn't talk about. And I think there's power in actually articulating those things for the reasons that you said, that I've had so many people reach out to me and being like, oh, I had hemorrhoids too. It's okay to talk about that. If that's an overshare, I think actually it can be extremely powerful for people to feel seen, for people to not feel so alone and isolated, like this is the only, I'm the only person who's ever gone through this. Yeah. So I mm -hmm. think that we are living in a culture of overshare for sure. And sometimes there'll be celebrities where I'm like, did I need to know about your husband's penis size? Maybe not. But I did a podcast um, and my my uh, co-host Josie, her husband broke his penis and he did an entire episode where he told, I think it was a public service. So I think there's nuance to be had in this conversation. Mm -hmm. And like you said, if you don't like the- Are we talking about that later in your sex talk of how you break your penis? Because we, now I, uh, <laughs> you need to listen to that episode, yeah, it's good. That's it, that's it. I think yeah. it's just the caveat here, which we, none of us have said, is make sure that it's not illegal or hateful. No. Then yes. we don't Fair care enough. about that that's overshare. Right. That is correct. Keep that to yourself. Thanks for watching. We've got lots more discussion and debates on everything from food and fashion to pop culture and current events. Don't forget to click like and subscribe.